We have lost 80% of the biomass of fish in the world ocean over the last 100 years. And just in the last 40 years, we have lost 60% of the biomass. So we've seen some very serious declines. And there's no doubt about what the cause is. We're talking about overfishing, overfishing at the global scale. You can think of the fish biomass in the, world, in the ocean as capital in a bank. And you can extract an interest from capital in the bank, some percent every year. Here, that's what we can consider sustainable fisheries, if that's what we do. But we have been drawing more than the interest. We have been drawing down the capital. And we are now left with 20% of the capital that our great-grandparents had. We are left with more like 40% of what our parents had. So substantial declines in very short time. There are only very few studies that try to predict how much seafood and how much fish production there will be in the future. Those prop, uh, studies range from all fish populations will be collapsed by 2048 to everything is fine. We turn the tide, things are improving. Management is starting to work. That would be nice. And this is the first study that uses truly global information to predict the, the biomass in the ocean and how that has changed over the last 100 years. We have used 200 ecosystem models from throughout the world. And each model represents a snapshot of life in the ocean. So the scientists best estimate for what's in the ocean at that place at that time, and not just about, about the few fish species, <coughs> but everything. So we have combined information from those 200 ecosystem studies into one big analysis. And we can now predict how much fish is there and how has the abundance of fish changed over the last 100 years. So nothing indicates that the decline is, has stopped. On the contrary, we are finding there's still a very strong decline. The, uh, the new uh, NEOS predicting the future ocean program is a collaboration between the Nippon Foundation and the University of British Columbia. And uh, we are working very closely together in a network that also involves uh, Princeton University and Duke University and UNEP's World Conservation Monitoring Center at Cambridge and the Stockholm Resilience Center on creating a capacity to make predictions about future of the ocean, or the future of life in the ocean. How much seafood will there be? Will there be fish for our children and our grandchildren to enjoy? And will there be a healthy ocean for them to enjoy as well? That's the kind of questions we are addressing. In this project here, we are developing some really interesting ways of, of getting scientists to work together. We are all experts building different kinds of global models. And what we're doing as part of this program is to get those models to talk together in real time. So from a scientific point of view, coupling the models is really the front of what's happening. This is the state of the art on how we do science at the global level. But we do understand that one thing is that we as scientists can predict the future, that we are able to come with credible answers, Another thing is, what impact will this have in the, on the world?